six. Without any further ado, I would ask uh, Congressman Blair. Good morning. Good morning. It is always a wonderful morning. It is a very early morning. For some of us who have come from a little far away, not so far away, but uh, I am so pleased to be here and welcome all to St. Mary's Martin Luther King Jr., who stood against the mountain of oppression and resistance, who energized not only African Americans, uh, but uh, our country who created images uh, of segregation, of violence, of hate to all the country. And because of that, the country's response was, this is not what America is about. It took a long time. It took a lot of blood. It took some lives to get us to where we needed to be as a country. And I said, I, I, Roy, I'm not sure, I think you were probably on the front steps too, John Conyers. Uh, in 1981, when I went to the Congress, I started working with John Conyers. And on numerous, the next times, uh, we demonstrated on behalf of setting aside a day to recognize the contributions of Martin Luther King. I can remember 1982 on Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, Stevie Wonder, John Congress, myself, and scores of other members of Congress singing happy birthday, Martin Luther. It is a unique, however, recognition of an extraordinary America. Unique in this sense, we celebrate the George Washington, a monument just uh, a few meters, a few yards from our Martin Luther King statue. And then Thomas Jefferson, who articulated the promise and pledge of America. And then just a few yards away sits Abraham those three extraordinary leaders of our country. We celebrate their birthdays. We have a President's Day. But you know, we don't come together with breakfast. We don't uh, come together with a revival to renew our spirit and commitment to the ideals for which they lived and fought and died. But we do for Martin Luther King Jr. We do so because Coretta Scott King said, Yes, it is right and appropriate that we set aside a day for somebody who could be mentioned and felt to be in the strata of the Washingtons, of the Jeffersons, of the Lincolns. What an extraordinary testament. And many of us lived during his time. Martin. Luther King Jr., who looked America in the eye and said, what you say sounds good, but what you're doing is bad. Martin Luther King Jr., for those of you who have not read it, and I say this almost every year, every year, I don't listen to the I Have a Dream speech, we do hear that, but I read once again, what I think is one of the most extraordinary writings of any person. Written from a cold and sparse jail cell, <clears throat> without any reference books. In response, and it, we will always remember this, in response to some folks who said, wait. Wait for justice. Wait for inclusion. Wait for fairness. Wait for equality. Wait for America's promise to be honored someday soon. Those people who said wait were members of the clergy. 
who wrote to Martin Luther King and said, why are you in Birmingham? Why have you come to this place? Why are you disrupting our community? And Martin Luther King's response to those members of the clergy was, because there is evil here. There is injustice and injustice here will mean injustice in other places as well. Coretta Scott King said, if we're going to celebrate Martin's birthday, it should not be just that he lived, or that he said, or that he represented. It should be and must be a renewal of our commitment to the objectives for which he fought and died. As so many other thousands have done, but unlike Martin Luther King Jr., he galvanized the world, which is why, of course, he got a Nobel Prize. Because not only his community was affected, or his state, or his region, or his nation, but like Gandhi, like Mandela, whom we just lost, he galvanized the conscience of the world to say, words are not enough. A segregated America is not equal opportunity. We hold these truths to be self-evident. Martin Luther King said they may be self-evident, but they are not self-executed. So we celebrate birth, the life, the words, the mission, 